In this section, we're going to look at proofing and printing. Now, in this document, there are numerous typing errors. So the first thing we need to do is to run the spell checker and the grammar checker. There's various ways of doing this. The shortcut, if you like shortcuts, is F7. Or if you want to, you can click on where it says review. So click on the review tab here, and then simply click on this icon here that says spelling and grammar. And the first word it's picked up is uh, what's meant to be optimization. So these are the options. So I'll click on this to correct it. Then the word engine is spelt incorrectly. So I'll click here to correct it. Here we've got two uh, capital letters at the start of the word. So I'll click here to, to uh, correct that. And as we go through, as you can see, there's lots and lots of other issues. So it's saying, well, there should be um, a comma after this. It's suggesting we get rid of the word actual, so it's blah blah blah, actual harm, so we just change that to harm. Customers has got an interesting spelling with two R's, so we'll check, we'll uh, correct that. It's suggesting I put a comma just after the word so, so I'll correct that. Companies is misspelt, so I'll correct that. This is meant to be you, so I'll correct that. Here we've got two repeated words, so I'll delete the repeated word. Here again it's suggesting a grammar change, so we should have a comma after the word you. So I'll click on this. Here it's suggesting that instead of the words in order to promote your um, website, we just have the word to, so we'll improve the grammar there. Again, it's suggesting to put a comma here, so I'll click on this. Another comma required here. Another comma required. In this case, it's saying, in the main, we see the same mistakes over and over again in our clients' websites. So it's suggesting we replace over and over again with repeatedly. So it just makes it, um, just makes it sound better, basically. Again, it's suggesting a comma here. So you kind of get the idea. I won't go through the whole document. Um, in this case, it's suggesting we get rid of the word particular and just have the word website. So, so on and so forth. Here again, it's suggesting a grammar change. Make changes on a daily basis. It's suggesting we change this to make these changes daily. However, it also requires a comma. So as you can see, this... Um, this document, to put it mildly, is packed full of typos and grammar errors, and it's a bit of a nightmare. But it does kind of represent the need for proper proofing of your documents prior to sending those documents out to other people. Uh, there's nothing worse than receiving a document that's just full of typos. It just gives a very bad impression. So once you've proofed your document, personally I would recommend you go back to the top of the document and you actually read through. Incidentally, a nice little feature that's available in Microsoft Word now is if I go to the top here, if I select, um, just say, this first line here, just to illustrate the point, under the Review tab, you have got a Read Aloud option here. If I click on this... What is search engine optimization? I'll try it for the next bit as well, so I'll select this paragraph. SEO is short for search engine optimization. As the term implies, SEO is all about optimizing a website to gain maximum visibility within the search engine results. As we will see, SEO takes time and effort. Do not be fooled by emails turning up unannounced in your inbox, promising instant SEO results. Now, as you can see in this case, uh, most people would pronounce this word SEO, not SEO. So it's far from perfect out of the box, but uh, it's a nice way of, again, helping you to proof your documents. I generally find that if I write something and I uh, typed it in wrong, when I actually read through, I sort of read what I meant to type instead of what I actually typed. As a final thing, what I then do is just manually go through and just read the whole thing once again. I know it's a waste of paper, but um, I don't know why I find that if I prove something on the screen and then I print it out, 
the typos on the printed page that I missed on the screen kind of leap out at me, but maybe that's just me. Anyway, once you've done all your proofing and you're quite happy with the grammar and the spelling is okay, then you've got your printing options. And the way you do that is you can press Control P if you like shortcuts, or you click on the file drop down menu here, go to where it says print, and these are your printing options here. If you have access to multiple printers, the first thing you want to do is select the correct printer. So in this case, I'll say, um, which one do we want to print to? Maybe that one, or maybe this one. As it is, I'll uh, leave it as the default, which is this one here. So that's how you can select other printers if your computer is attached to more than one printer. The next thing you can do is decide how many copies you want. Obviously the default is one, but if you wanted 10 copies, you could just type it in here or use the up and down arrows here to select the required number. I'll leave that as one. Normally you print the whole thing. If you click on the down arrow here, there's uh, other options here. You can print just this one page, or if you've made a selection, if you dragged across uh, some paragraphs in the document, you could print just the um, selected text. So I say normally you'd leave that as print everything. If you have what's called a duplex printer, that's a printer that can print on both sides of the paper, here you can select to either print on one side of the paper or print on both sides, like so. Something else you might want to change is the orientation. Normally you just leave it in the portrait, but you could change it to landscape if you wanted. Paper size is something you only need to change once. It depends on your country. So if you live somewhere like, um, say, Australia or the UK, uh, you'd have A4 size paper. In the United States, you'd have letter size paper. So if you're in the United States here, you just change that to letter. As it is, I'm in Australia, so I'll leave it at A4. As far as margins are concerned, you can have the default margins. The margins obviously are just the areas around the uh, edge of the paper here. Notice if you want to, you could have wide margins or you could have narrow margins. So if I go for narrow margins, you can see on the preview here what that's going to look like. So that's narrow margins. Let's try wide margins. It'll look like that. So you've got this huge margin around the side. Or I can just leave it as uh, normal. So sometimes if you've got um, a document that doesn't quite fit on one page, a little trick I use sometimes is to use narrow margins or I can adjust the margins manually just to make them slightly smaller. So you could go to custom margins if you wanted to by clicking on here and then you can set the margins any which way, top, bottom, um, left and right. Then another option down here is how many pages per sheet. Let's say you were just proofing something and you wanted to cut down the amount of paper. You could have maybe two pages per sheet or possibly even four. Obviously the default is one page per, per sheet. The other thing you can do is you've got this preview area over here. So this is looking at page one of nine. If I click on this uh, little arrow here that says uh, next page, basically I can scroll through the document like this, one page at a time and just look at visually how it's going to be printed. So that's page nine. And then we can come back through the document like this. The other thing here is you've got a little control bar which you can zoom in and zoom out with. Or set it any which way you want. So if you've got it sort of looking at three pages here, you can use the scroll bar here to scroll down three pages at a time or scroll back up. So those really are your printing options. You have got a few other things you can do. You can go and click here to change the printer properties if you want to. So if I clicked on this, it would bring, this would bring up a dialog box. Um, that dialog box would relate specifically to your particular printer. So in this case, I've got this printer installed so I can change things like uh, layout options and how it publishes and, and what have you. So when you've done all that and you decide you actually want to print, then basically just click on the print button and that will print to your printer. And that's it, you're done.